Tonight, on a special episode of Following the Light, we're gonna be exploring exactly what this alien phenomenon is. either a, what they claim to have been abducted or an actual encounter. What would you say they're actually seeing in the sky? Are we seeing aliens or are we seeing uh, those uh, air balloons? <clears throat> well, I'm going to stop you right there and say that it is 100% possible that what you're seeing in the sky is aliens. I th there's not a shadow of a doubt in my mind what you're seeing could be aliens. And it, go ahead. And, and why and why is that specifically? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. You look up in the sky. What do you see? Do you just see one thing? No. You see clouds? You might see some birds? You might see stars or the sun or the moon? The sky, there's a lot of shit up there. Who's to say aliens are not one of them? Alright, I'm, I'm really glad to have you here. Uh, and uh, your name is uh, uh, Russ? Russ. Rusty. It's Rusty? Russ Rusty. Russ Rusty. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, Russ Rusty, um, you've had your own experience, you know, you've had your own alien encounter. I did. Okay, and you said that you actually, what it was is that you went out into the woods and you were, uh, what is it, fishing? Or what was it? I went out to the woods with some friends. We were, uh, the whole weekend we were eating violet sage root, which is a uh, hallucinogenic fungus that grows in swamps. Alright, well it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank and you. And your name is? Okay, uh, well it's it, it's a pleasure to have you here because you have a very interesting story and we need, I just want you to know everything's going to be okay and we're going to get to the bottom of this, okay? Alright, so what what I want to know is what happened that night. 10 years ago when you were abduct abducted. You know, what happened 10 years ago is in the past. Look, I'm just a man trying to get inside another man. That's you. All right, get in there, get in deep, and find out what is going on with this alien encounter. We need to know, the world needs to know, and they deserve to know, as their right to know things under the constitution of knowing but I need you to just explain we'll ease in we'll 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 lube it up we'll wrap it up we'll we'll ease it in real tight into what is knowledge about this scenario and we'll figure it out well all right let's just we'll start from here I don't like you I don't I don't like your face, I don't like your voice, I don't I don't like your your fucking suit and especially your ridiculous fucking tie. Yeah, well Who the fuck would wear that? Well, I I'm just a, I'm just a man wearing a tie. So You're just a fag wearing a tie. That can't come off, so I'm not I'm not taking that shit off. Pardon me. I'm just I, I'm, I'm getting, sorry, I can't do this. I'm getting excited. If You're you don't excited. take that fucking tie off, man. It's just this isn't going to fucking happen. Okay, let's back up. Uh, you said an <clears throat> alien. Yeah. We're talking aliens from space. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead, continue. Yeah, well, one of those names was uh, Fernando, I believe, and I... I Did you name... I'm sorry. Uh, really quick, really quick. Okay, so you named... You named him Fernando? Did you... So you spent no. enough time to name him? You didn't name him? I didn't name him, he had his own name. I come to in the desert. My friends are gone. I don't know where they are. And I'm just running. I'm running as fast as I can. All of a sudden the light descends upon me. The light. I've heard, and a lot of, and a lot of uh, 
people that I've talked to and their encounters, there's always been a presence of light. There and was two lights for me. There was two lights for you. Yes. So you had double, double They the flashed light. red and blue. Red and blue. Um, and, and a lot of people seem to uh, throw out uh, when they hear this case is that it was a helicopter or some sort of airplane. No, I know exactly what it is. I was there. By I, alien. I remember sudden tremors all over my body. Like I was being lifted up and dropped repeatedly for what felt like five minutes. And then they took me inside of their ship. It was complete blackness other than some bars over the windows that they had. See, that's a new one. I haven't heard the bars. Okay, because uh, from the reports that I have is that you, you actually spent some time in prison. Roughly, I don't, have it, I don't have the exact number of days or a year, actually. You know, a lot of people would say that they look up in the sky and they see stars mm -hmm. or maybe shooting stars which are, you know, we all know are meteorites entering the Earth's atmosphere. Yes, and uh, first off, I would just like to correct you. Uh, shooting stars is an outdated term. We prefer speeding stars because they're not being shot out of anything. It's a misconception. Um, so they're just moving very fast, therefore speeding stars. Mm -hmm. um, but, but more so to your point, yes, uh, these things that people see in the sky and they're just like, that's a plane, that's, a, that's some sort of space debris. It's, it's flying through the atmosphere. Um, they, they're just simply wrong. And, and you can tell because you look at it and it kind of like stops a little bit and like makes a gesture that like knows that it's, you're looking at it and like kind of winks at you. It doesn't literally wink because it's a ship, but it gives like, a, like a, the wink feeling. Like, a, like the ship is just like, I see you. And then it zips right on by. That's not, asteroids don't do that. They just don't. The worst ones, I mean, I, you hear the classic sort of anal probing, and after a while, to be honest, that just doesn't even, I mean, I have colonoscopies, you know, once every two weeks, so it just, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't phase me. Yeah, sometimes that excites. It, exactly. It can be, uh, it's an exciting endeavor, uh, yeah. but, uh, but I digress. Uh, so some of the scariest I've seen is um, someone was abducted by aliens once, and what they did is they took, it was a woman, they took her up to the spaceship, and then they called her really mean names. They called her fat a lot. They called her a whore and a slut. And it was, it was emotionally devastating for me to hear that because I had always hoped that aliens would be not bullies of the universe. Space bullying is a problem. It is. It's a huge problem in this universe. And uh, it's time that we really took a stand on it. And we said, no more. No more. No they, more. They can't just come in here and treat us that way. Yeah. Like it's just, it's not okay. You know, and some of the notes I've been taking, uh, you know, it says that there's a good percentage of people out there that just say that people need to learn to take a joke. It really is. It really is. Um, and uh, you, 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 you hear things of, of these aliens using uh, racial slurs and using, uh, using derogatory just this and that. And, and honestly, I blame alien rap. I really do. Because they use those terms a lot. And they throw it around like it's no big deal, and so then these aliens listen to it, and they feel like they can just, you know, call anybody that. They can, and it and it hurts people's feelings. It really, it really kind of went downhill uh, after uh, '84, '85. Uh, some people just kind of moved into the neighborhood, and then crack really got in there, and it's just, it's it's too bad too because it used to be a really nice, nice constellation, and now, just nothing. Go. All right. You were out there in the log cabin with your wife and your kid. They left you. What happened? Well, thing is, is, uh, you know, I have a temper. Whatever, right? Like, you know, we're having dinner. You know, my fucking wife. She's all right, you know. Whatever. And, uh, you know, the, the turkey was fucking dry. It was fucking bone dry. And it tasted like shit. So I fucking pointed it out. Whatever. She's like, hey, I mean, I'm gonna go to the town. And I'm gonna take the kids. I'm going to my mother's. Ah. Whatever. 
But I have this beautiful fucking log cabin I can fucking hang out in, man. I'm fucking all by myself. I don't have to hear bitching and complaining. So you guys argued, and then the abduction, they left, and then the abduction happened. Yes, that's exactly what happened. They left, I was abducted. Simple as that. Well, there's got to, I mean, there's, I mean, I was, I was simplifying it. So there's got to be, I mean, there's more to that. There's probably going to be a divorce. So, you know, I had been drinking earlier. So I kept drinking, whatever. I'm here, there's a nice fire, we're in a cabin. You know, I'm by myself in the middle of nowhere. So I decide that I'm gonna go for a walk. Cause I'm in the middle of the woods, I can do that shit, you know, there's no one in sight. Right. All of a sudden, I saw the light. Peering through the trees, it just ascended. What was your immediate reaction to that? What the fuck is this shit? You know, I thought it was her. I thought it was her coming back. And I'm like, oh, well, fuck, you know, whatever. She's coming back. Yeah, she needs me. I fucking, I don't need her. Whatever. I don't give a shit. So, she's on her way back. And your immediate feeling was to walk away? Or did you wait there for her? Well, like I said, I thought it was her. I mean, if you were listening. And a big-ass fucking beam came and shined and fucking levitated me into the fucking spacecraft. Aliens! No, not aliens. Maybe you were abducted by aliens. I don't think so, you know, because... Uh, well, okay, what did, they, what did they look like? Well, they were green and uh, they had big heads and they were at least seven foot tall. Uh, that's, that sounds like aliens. No, it's not aliens. What, what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is, is that if these things abducted you, what is it that's keeping you from believing that's aliens? Because I was probed. Um, no, go, but go ahead and continue your story. Yeah. Well, here's Fernando. And... Well, here's a bit. I gave him a job down at the lumber yard, let him use my child's social security number. And then one day the INS showed up at my fucking doorstep saying that I was going to get a $350,000 fine if I didn't, you know, send him back to his country. And now I have I a completely that, different opinion about aliens. I don't know, I just, uh, it sounded a lot like you let an illegal immigrant into your home and uh, you can't more afford more it. like illegal alien, is what they call them. Okay, uh, but, you see, because we're talking about aliens from space. Yeah. I mean, they, they live. Space. They live in a space. Yes, I used to, you know, take the summers down there. No, it's pretty. So you've expensive. actually visited the alien home. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you, are you getting this? Okay, this is great. Okay, what is it like on the home planet? What do they call it? It was, it was the planet of uh, Cancun. What they call it? Planet you get a lot of pussy up there, man. I'm telling you, aliens don't fuck like you don't fuck around. You fornicated with an alien. Yes, sir. This is, okay, this is, okay. And to be clear, in outer space, in Cancun, wait. Cancun? Were you referring to Cancun? <clears throat> no, Cancun. Okay, so you're, you're on the ha alien home turf. Yes, you're sir. You're on the alien home turf, and just describe to me the atmosphere. Well, they, they have these really great big stationaries where they, there's bright lights that, that are triggered by sound. And all I know is that I passed out because I had something, I believe, put in my drink. And I woke up the next morning with uh, just semen completely drenched in my ass. Alien, se alien semen. And you said that there was other people yes. there. Yes, sir. So you and some friends were abducted. <clears throat> well, I don't know. If we, I would say abducted, but you know, we went there on our own free will. But it really just sounds like you went to a rave in Mexico and you partied a little too hard with your I, I believe so. Yes. Let's get this straight. All right. I was never in prison. I was being held. Are we clear on that? Oh, that's I'm. No, you know, I, I was being held in detention inside their craft. Um, 
So, uh, describe these aliens. Uh, were, was how many were there? What did they look like? There, there were thousands inside of this mothership. They had a water purification chamber there, and that's where I was entered. Okay, so you entered through the water purification chamber. And would you say that these other thousand or so aliens were they also held captive? No, they lived there. Right. Was there any other specific types of aliens that stood out from these orange jumpsuit aliens? Um, some of them were a peach sort of color. And some of them were blue armor. Blue I'm, armor. I, I can only imagine that they were like the generals or the keepers of the peace. Okay, uh, peacekeepers. Um, so almost keepers like uh, guards. Would you say guards would maybe be a, a, a fitting term? Sure. Why not? Okay. Now, did you ever have any uh, time to go out and let's say exercise in any of these uh, scenarios you you found yourself in? Um. Just during the times they entered me in the purification chamber, uh, I kept my room for the most part. I'm sorry, did you say they entered you? Yes, that's in where they entered me. But, I mean, like, that's where they got you in. No, they entered me. Let's talk about more um, your, your life on the ship. What was it like? Did you make any friends? Did you have any roommates? No, no. I was beat up a lot. That that's that's never fun. No, it wasn't. Uh, and aliens uh, are dicks. They are. They call you names. Uh, they shit in jars. Okay, they shit in jars, and then they throw them at you. They even throw it at their superiors, and they enter you multiple times. And it drives you to live in a cabin out in the woods. It sounds like you've had a tough life living, very living, tough. A, living aboard the ship. Uh, yes. It was very, it's very tough. Uh, what was it like towards the end of your sent? I'm sorry. Um, towards the end of your your stay on the ship. Um. The attacks were much more frequent. It was relentless. They never left me alone. They kept luring me places and violating me. And I'd really rather not get into it. I think I think we should. I think we should rest. I don't want to get do into it. I'm sorry. I never. Do you prefer rust or rusty? It's rust rusty. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So rust rusty is your your first name. Can I ask you what your last name is? No. No, no, most definitely. And uh, one of the most troubling things is that uh, there's so many different species. It's more than it's more than mm -hmm. a racist thing. It's it's definitely gone into mm -hmm. uh, you know species. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and and it's why you see a lot of aliens don't get along with humans because human beings, in terms of like the alien uh, body shape spectrum, are very strange. We only have two arms. We have double the amount of legs that most of them have. Uh, it's just very strange for them to see. And so I guess I can understand, but I would have hoped that they would be a little more open-minded and their uh, technological advances would prove that they're obviously intelligent beings. Mm -hmm. You would hope that they would be uh, open-minded uh, with that intelligence. And it looks like maybe they're not quite there yet, you know, but we'll, well see. possibly, you could help me out here. I could. Uh, because I have a, a few, a, a list of uh, terms that I have collected uh, uh, racial slurs. Okay. That I've collected, mm -hmm. and uh, I just want you to see if you can clarify some of them for me. Uh, now, the term um, "faggot" actually th does that mean the same as, as uh, we interpret it here on Earth? No, it does not. Faggot does not mean no, um, because uh, in actually most parts of the universe, especially the uh, southeastern part of it. Um, a fag is actually uh, gold, like that's what they refer to their gold as. 
And so to call someone a faggot is actually, uh, you're kind of calling them like a, like a miser and a really greedy person, like, oh, you're a faggot, you just own all the gold. So it is, the, a faggot is definitely an offensive term, but just uh, for different reasons than it is here. Okay. And, um, yeah, straight up, uh, there are, there are, uh, many others, and, uh, um, and I want to get to all of them, but, you know, there's only so many I can handpick, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, faggot being at the top of the list, like, as usual. As usual, um, yes. But, uh, yeah, and, and the next one would be uh, Honky. I know that's mm -hmm. not very racist. Uh, honky actually uh, was picked up from the States uh, when uh, the aliens first hit New York around uh, 72, 73. Uh, they heard the word honky used a lot. And uh, aliens do not like white people. Uh, just generally do not trust them. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of uncomfortable, to be honest, being around them, because just the way they look at you is really, is just not so good. And so they will, they will use honky all the time. All the time. In fact, I don't hear them ever say anything other than it. I've been called a honky a lot. Mm -hmm. Out of 75 people that I interviewed, uh, 43 of them mentioned tweezers mm -hmm. as a slur. Can you explain that? Um, well, a tweezer or a tweezy uh, sometimes is also referred to as uh, is basically an alien who has developed this sort of like rash uh, and it's all over their body. It's it, it, uh, skin flakes off of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to get rid of the disease, you have to kind of get rid of all the flakes at once. Yeah. And so you take tweezers and you, but so that means that you're spending, you know, five, six, seven hours a day on your crazy alien planet mm -hmm. and you're just tweezing yourself and tweezing yourself. Yeah. And people just walk by and they're just like, look at that fucking tweezer. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he needs to get a room, he needs to get a home or something. He can't even clean himself. Yeah. So uh, tweezer is not you know, not used too often because they are trying to fix that problem, but there's definitely tweezers out there. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Um, yeah, and uh, did that leave you with any scars? Or both physically and or mentally? Did that, uh, did it leave anything behind for you? No, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm ex-Marine, so. I could see, actually I can't. I, I cannot level with you there. Because, uh, I mean, of course, because I wasn't a Marine, so. Yeah, well. Or in any you of You weren't, armies. so. I wasn't. Yeah. Then you were. Yes, I was. Are you sure about that? Yeah, you know, I was. Because uh, it says that you were in a juvenile detention here until you were uh, from 14 to 18. Yeah, that's, you know, like, uh, yeah. That's not the Marines. That is what I believe to be the Marines. Okay, that's, you know, we'll just leave that there. We'll, that's fine. And during those two days, uh, in that one brief encounter that you had with them, anything else happen? Well, I don't, wouldn't call it brief. And it also said that shortly after the events, you, you actually, uh, you came back to, uh, you, you woke up in the log cabin. Well, when the police found me, I was... I was holding my guts out of my ass, so, you know. Yeah, because I do have in, in a... In I a blacked out, man, after, you know, so, after I came to, I mean, it was so intense. Because I do have in a report here that you were actually, you were literally holding your, your guts in a paper sack. Yes. That you found. Yes, yeah, just a dirty, wet paper sack. I'm surprised it held it all, you know what I mean, but it did, thank God. So, are you back with your wife? Yes. And how, how did she take the news? Well, I don't know, she said, you know, fucking what comes around goes around. I guess she's right. Uh, yeah, are you married? Uh, no, no. No? No. There's probably a reason. But it's just that your testimony is so interesting, and in, like how you describe the, the, the inner workings of the uh, of the ship or, or truck as you're as you're claiming to be is uh, be m more technologically advanced than than uh, what you're trying to make it out to be. And it the just seems first that truck I ever saw with such a big fucking dashboard. See, and that to me says that that was an alien encounter. Well, I I don't see the connection. Well, the fact that this truck, as you say, was not actually physically touching the ground 
it was actually floating. There's actually, we have eyewitnesses, we have several eyewitnesses of the night that you were abducted that in that general area, a ship of some sort had landed and then whisked away up into the, the air. Now, I think that's no coincidence. No comment. So these these attacks, I think I believe we need to we need to get down to the root of it, or else, I mean I'm no psycho psychologist. I have I have been to the root of it and back. I have dug my way into that hole, and someone had to fish me out. All right, I've seen all the doctors, I've seen all the experts, I've I've seen the guest you had on earlier. I saw him walking out of this place. He 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 didn't return my hello. He didn't even shake your hand. No. I'm gonna cut my fucking arm off if you bring it up again. Don't, hey, it's, it's all it's, it's all good. We're all, all good right. here. We're, we're good here. You're you're just gonna be rust rusty. I'm rust rusty. I'm just gonna be regular old Jack McKenna. Look. So towards the end of your stay on the ship, you you had said that you were violated. Was there anything good? that came out of that experience. Could you say, because I could have sworn you, you, wrote, you wrote down in your own testimony that you, you gained a few things from this experience. I did. I learned that shit is an effective weapon when placed in a jar. Um, no, that was mostly it. Okay. And, and yeah, I could see where that would maybe dive into several other things, but that's the main goal, is to, to never get shit on. Do you ever see anything in the sky? Do you wait for that call again? That they might actually be out there? Oh yeah. Every night I'm expecting round two. Really. I have learned to trap animals. I have learned to recycle my bodily fluids. And is there anything that you... And I'd like to keep it that way, but if they come back, I'm coming hard. You're going to come real hard. I'm going to come hard. I'm going to come as hard as they've ever seen. You don't have any weapons. It's all hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, uh, is there a particular reason why you've, uh, you've uh, opted against weapons? I don't know how to use them. Right, right. So you never... I, I don't know how to use weapons. They, they kind of freak me out. Not even a, a stick or... Maybe a, a knife. Well, sticks hurt. Gotcha. Have you ever been hit with a stick? No, no. Would you I like actually... to be hit with a stick? No, actually, I, I would not. All right. Like to be hit. Take my word. I got your word. Do you still keep in contact with the outside world, including your family and friends? No, we lost some time. We lost contact some time after they had learned that I had been entered. Um, after they had learned that I had entered, and plan to enter in the coming future when they inevitably return. Yeah, I caught tweezers. Um, I somehow contracted tweezers during one of their probing sessions. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nasty infliction, really. My whole my skin fell apart. I all the skin that you see on me now is newly grafted. Wow. I mean they they did a bad job. It's remarkable. Um I mean a lot of people say that, you know, uh a lot of what tweezers is, you know, is, is really just a slang term for uh what we humans face every day is uh, shingles. Would you have anything any response to that it's it's a similar infliction except it's grown in the stars and passed from planet to planet because I'd like to see I'd like to see some sort of public transportation like a, some sort of space bus from these planets that that the average alien could you know ride could maybe get a month pass and and uh, come visit when they'd like of course um, and the hot topic seems to be probing mm-hmm of all the cases you've encountered, which I believe uh, I'm... 647. Wow. The anal probes are expensive. We're talking like easily 600, 700 space dollars. 
which uh, loosely is about like 45, 50 American dollars. So, uh, so, so we're getting into the realm of human trafficking mm -hmm. in the alien world mm -hmm. sexually. Well, humans are uh, easily kind of a commodity, unfortunately, and it's really, it's scary to think about, to be honest with you. It, it, it really kind of breaks your heart to hear these stories. Um, yeah, basically an alien will just, uh, you hear a lot about it in like European countries, an alien will walk into like a bar or a club or something and uh, claim to be from, uh, oftentimes they say Italy because Italians tend to look like aliens anyway. Um, and so... Uh, they say they're from Italy, and they invite them back to the apartment, and before you know it, they're using their space gas, and they're just totally passed out, and they're waking up on Jupiter. It's a, it's a real tragedy. It really is. And in one of your testimonies, I thought it was most interesting, was uh, Jessica Murray, mm -hmm. who had uh, been encountered uh, herself 71 times, and uh, she was actually suffering a bit of Stockholm Syndrome. But you found her there, and... What what spoke to you about her that said this lady she's been she's been tampered with? Well, I could tell because uh, Stockholm syndrome, as you mentioned, uh, is actually relatively common with these sorts of abductions, unfortunately. Uh, and you can usually tell because they will do things like uh, paint themselves green and wear a lot of tin foil. Uh, and uh, you, you see a lot of them building jetpacks out of cardboard and it's very, it's like you're not in Calvin and Hobbes, that's obviously not how you get into space. Uh, but they are so adamant about it that they see these sort of theatrical uh, put-ons and costumes makes them closer to the people that they love, which uh, is someone who's actually abused these people for a very long time. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a tragedy. And that's why I'm really happy to be on this, uh, this program, because I really want to spread awareness about it. Uh, and that we have a hotline, it's 1-800-444-6829. If you or anyone you know is the victim of any sort of alien human trafficking, please call that number. Please. Yes. And we're going to be posting Please. that phone number on our website, so we're yes. going to try to get that out Thank you so as much. most often as possible. Thank you. Um, will you actually be answering those calls? I will. That's my home phone number. All right. Well, this has been fascinating. You have uh, definitely filled us in on... I'm happy to fill you. And it was a pleasure to be filled. Thank so you. So I, I just want to say uh, thank you very much, and I hope to have you on our next program so uh, we can further talk about your future experiences. I'd love to. Yeah. Thank great. you so much. Yeah, no problem. The being that came out of that spaceship was an asshole. I hope you guys really put an end to this. We're not. We don't need another another 9/11 on our hands. Oh, okay, that didn't happen that way. Uh, so again, thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, I didn't catch your name. What was your name again? Uh, Jack McKenna. Jack, that's cool. Yeah. It's a very American name. Thank you very I'm much. I'm gonna miss the Medela, but. You guys are doing the right thing. I'm inevitably going to give some uh, room full of women tweezers in the future. I don't regret it. It's just, it's the duty that was passed upon me. Well, this has been very insightful. And, uh, Russ Rusty, I gotta tell you, your story has been one of the more interesting ones, and I thank you for being on our show. I thank you for having me. Well, you know, uh, it's been great having you. Great. Uh, but uh, I got nothing out of this. I got really, I got, I, I got really, uh, you know, no information out of you. I am actually not uh, pleased to have you on this show. I'm actually, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. not pleased to I'm be actually, here. So. Can we, can we, hey Larry, yeah, yeah. hey Larry, Larry, this is, I fucking, this guy? Bullshit. Fucking hire me to do this shit. Get a guy who actually believes he's abducted by aliens, Larry.